it's a very interesting question and it's going to have to ultimately be decided on the basis of what we consider a reasonable person to have done in the circumstances. And, you know, people have different views about that right now, you know, the, the view about whether I, we should get vaccinated, whether it should be mandatory. Um, so yeah, it's a very difficult question from my perspective. Now, Mr. Levitt, people have different views. I know that you're one of them. What's your view? Look, as of today, as a moment we're taping this discussion, it would not be enough to simply be unvaccinated if you don't have any symptoms. It's not, you have no reason to believe you have COVID or you're a spreader. But here's the point. A lot changes based on public policy. And increasingly, we've seen federal government mandating vaccinations in the workplace, City of Toronto mandating vaccinations, all the banks mandating vaccinations. Seneca College was a forerunner. Loyalist College and other colleges are, are saying it now. Everybody's jumping on board. A lot of my clients have been, I haven't had so many calls about anything as I've had in the last week from different employers in this country and in this province in particular, but not just this province. And as it becomes de rigueur to require workplace vaccinations, I could see the law evolving very easily to if an employee gets, or a customer or a supplier, anyone contracts COVID in a workplace with everybody, chief medical officers, levels of government officials, either requiring or suggesting and proposing vaccinations, it might reach the point that a judge will say, since this company did not require vaccinations, you're negligent in not doing that. Because vaccination is a gold medal standard protection of the workplace. So I can see the law evolving that anybody who gets COVID in a workplace where there is not a requirement of mandatory vaccinations, that's prima facie negligent and they'd have a good case. Not today, but maybe three weeks or four weeks from now even. I mean, th yeah, this is this is a new thing. Um, employers mandating vaccinations, either for their staff or customers, and others are not. And I think universities are, are one of the biggest examples right now, uh, although the new announcement today of, of a lot of banks have suddenly mandated it. Stefan, or Professor Serafin, um, what do you think the implication of this policy being so widespread in some institutions means for creating liability? If vaccination isn't made mandatory, um, is, are they at risk of, uh, of having liability if there's an outbreak? But on the other hand, are they at risk of liability if, uh, if some of their employees or students challenge these vaccine mandates? How do they I mean, balance those, those, two, those two interests? Right. I mean, I, 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 I'm, I'll have it to be honest, when my employer was one of the first uh, to mandate vaccines. And I'm frankly not entirely comfortable with the way that was done. Um, and so you're right, there is a balancing act to be made here. And um, the, the, biggest, the biggest question for me, I guess, is this. Uh, on the one hand, I think that uh, my co-panelist is completely right. The, to the extent that people and organizations all adopt this policy, it is more and more likely that courts will actually go in the direction of saying that you know vaccination is what a reasonable person should be doing in the circumstances. There's another question, which is, should they, should the courts actually be uh, going down that route? Uh, and as you mentioned, uh, there's also the risk that uh, certain people will challenge uh, the mandatory vaccine policies. And on that, on that level, I think it's, it's less likely that it'll be challenged, say, in civil, for civil, rem civil remedies and uh, so for monetary damages, for example. And you'd see more along the lines of just challenging workplace policies, challenging uh, any kind of sanctions that employers try to impose on employees. Uh, as a consequence of not uh, getting vaccinated, um, so that the, the issues, I guess, in a sense, they're they're you know they're they're contradictory uh, sort of problems, but uh, in a sense, they're also separate problems in a strange way. Mr. Levitt, I think we we only have about thirty seconds. Um, I'm going to pose this question to you. You can answer it in in the next um, the next segment. But some workplaces are different from others. Uh, for example, it might be more consequential for an employee to hide a positive COVID case if they work in a long term care facility where they're vulnerable people, as opposed to if a bank employee who's mostly work from home right now hides a positive uh, COVID case or or spreads it only in a, in a small group of of mostly not particularly vulnerable people, presumably. Um, when we come back, I want your opinion on the difference between those types of, of workplaces and, and the different risks of liability faced by those workplaces.